came to the course about seven years ago, and before that, I was a, um, a disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda. And, um, and then when the course came to me um, through the disappearance of the universe, my, a friend of mine had read the book and she'd been talking and talking about it, just raving about it. Well, this is a friend who does a lot of spiritual buffet, and I'd learned at Ananda the value of going very deep into a path, like it sounds like you did. And once you've gone very deep into something, you are able to put your head up and look and see these other things, I think, with more discernment. So I had been um, with Ananda for quite some time and had taken yoga teacher training and everything because at an all-day meditation, I had received a message or from Spirit, I believe, to do the teacher training. And I wasn't necessarily interested in that, but I received the message, so I did it. I now understand why, why I got that message. So when I came to the course, my friend had been talking about working with the Holy Spirit, and a crisis hit my life, like sometimes that's what drives us to spirit. Um, I received a phone call that my son was in jail, and he was in Southern California. And it was like 9 o'clock at night, and I wasn't going to drive down right then, but I was kind of freaked out. He's 19. And uh, I was really freaked out. He was 19. And so I was like, how am I going to go to sleep tonight? I have to go to sleep so I can get up in the morning and drive down. Mm -hmm. And so I just started calling to Holy Spirit in my mind. This before I read the Course or even the Disappearance of the Universe. And so I just started calling to Spirit in my mind. And somehow I went to sleep and, you know, took care of that situation and then uh, started reading Disappearance right away. And um, was really getting into it and totally having my mind blown because I thought I had a really broad mind when it came to spirituality because I had studied the yoga um, scriptures and things for many years. And, but this was even blowing that out. Um, especially the part about God not having created this world. And, um, and so I did go into sort of a spiritual crisis. And it was funny because I started reading DU and getting very excited and sharing some of it with my husband. And then next thing I know, I left the house one day and he started reading it. And then he passed me up in the book and everything. So we're both students, which I'm really happy to say. But... Um, through my yoga teaching, I had learned when I went in to teach a yoga class that I didn't go in with a preset, oh, we're going to do this pose, that pose, the other thing. I closed my eyes in between the postures and spirit guided me and told me what we were going to do next. So I realized I had that experience of working with spirit in that way. And then one of the things I soon started doing after studying the course was saying the prayer, I'm, I'm here only to be truly helpful. And I could remember to say it right before I went into my yoga class and, and to really go in with that intention. And so more I was getting, hearing it in between those poses. And I'd already reconciled the whole body thing because it's like, okay, if I'm a student of the course and the body doesn't matter and you're teaching yoga, how does this all work and the chakras and all this stuff. And for me, it's like we're living on this plane and so we drive a car or we use a phone or whatever. Those are tools. And so the body is a learning tool is the way I see it. You know, at its highest function is to be a learning tool. So I started saying that prayer before my yoga classes. And then I finally I got to the point where I just started saying that prayer every day. And so I try to um, do the listening for spirit to be guided. But I would love to learn more about that and lately in my life I have become so super busy the last couple of years because I'm now taking care of my mother who's in skilled nursing and I'm her power of attorney and her life was lived as kind of a big mess because she was a drug addict and I really didn't see her very much for the last 20 years. Now I get to see my mom every day and I love her and I've always loved her and it's, it's a gift. I feel it's a gift that I have my mom. So um, one of the reasons I came here today 
is because I have gotten so super busy out in the world doing all of these things, sort of cleaning up her house and evicting people and all these things I've had to do, um, that I felt like I kind of need this little shot in the arm <laughs> with my spiritual life again. Um, so I would love to hear more about just that tuning in. And um, another thing I want to say of my spiritual crises when I came to the Course, and I was like, oh, but wait, I'm a disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda, and if I choose another course or another path, does this mean I'm being unfaithful or not a good disciple or all of these kinds of things? And what two things that really hit me was the course was all about forgiveness and practicing forgiveness. And even though I had um, a great practice of meditation and had even learned um, Kriya, I, I would have these wonderful meditations, but then like 15 minutes later, I'd be like biting somebody's head off. And I was like, what is wrong? There's something wrong with this picture. And so for me, I realized why the calling to the course part, big part of it was coming is because of these relationships in my lives and the practice of forgiveness had to do with people. And then that was like one of my greatest challenges was living with these, these people who share my house with me and things like that. <laughs> and to practice forgiveness was um, my calling to do that. So there was that. And then the other piece that I wanted to say was this really true recognition of all is one. And there is no individual Paramahansa Yogananda, Jesus, Buddha, all is one. And all that I've learned will never leave me. It's all with me. It's all within me. So, oh, beautiful. Well, I'll just address it briefly, and then I think Armel has, we've talked recently about this whole thing of busyness, versus just absolute sinking into the stillness. So maybe you could share a few words about that. But I would say you're right onto it. It's, it's so deep and it does transcend the individual pathways. The experience of oneness is, is the transcendent experience. So you know that in your heart and you know that you're on your way to that. Um, recently, I think several months ago, a friend of mine was reading an article on Facebook from the ones who founded and who invented Vipassana. Uh, it was the, the deep Vipassana teachers who had actually invented it, coming together and talking and having conferences in Thailand, you know, to share all of their 20 some odd years or whatever, 20, 30 years of, of experience with living Vipassana and practicing it fully. And, and the one who actually was part of actually coming up with the whole Vipassana movement and everything was basically saying in there, wow, we got down to such deep aspects of mind that we thought we were hitting the bottom of the mind and there was this rage and terror down there that shocked us, shocked the whole bunch of us, <laughs> all, all these Vipassana meditators that have devoted their whole life to it. They started like wondering about reading more about psychology and, and looking at other aspects of, of spirituality because it's a very direct approach, but there's, it, it was quite frightening what they came upon down in the depths of the mind. And I just think that was beautiful that they could just come to that and say, wow, we don't have all the answers. Um, there's some, we're, we're really opening now to connecting and going even much, much deeper after all of these decades of devotion practice to this pathway. We are seeing that it's scary down there and there's something, there's something further that we have to go at. And um, what you're talking about with the sense of the distractions and the busyness versus sinking inward, I thought Armel, was just talking to me about that. Um, that's right where you you were right at that point. Yeah, there there are just two things coming to my mind about that. Just uh, how sometimes just busyness is a way to avoid the stillness, 
and to really be mindful of that. But also I feel like that the spirit is using, again, everything that you are inspired by to bring you deeper. Because when the mind is too scared to be still, then the spirit will use seeming activity to teach you that you're not the doer of anything. And, uh, and to allow yourself to be done through by the spirit and learn this deeper experience that you are not the doer, not being identified with the doer and, and bring your mind into a very deep stillness actually and several weeks ago or I don't remember when but um, I was in Hawaii and I had a day I just woke up and I was in such a joy and I was ready to, to go to the extension center, which is a retreat center we have there. And, um, and to just yeah join with those who are there and uh, I, I had so much joy, I just wanted to extend it. And so I went with a friend and we spent the whole day in meetings. Meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting with all the people living there. And, and I came back late at night i think and it was a day like huh i had the feeling that the day was just a blink like it lasted for a minute or something like time totally collapsed and totally disappeared from the experience and i had i didn't have the feeling at all that i was meeting with people it's it was just such a profound experience that the line between doing and not doing being the body being active or the body being still in order to be in stillness totally melt away and that there was only stillness during the whole day there wasn't an awareness of meeting people uh, there was just this flow of the spirit that was there and by just allowing this flow once again that's the experience that was that was there it wasn't a feeling like i was doing anything or or that i was being active or that I was busy, although the whole day was really busy, but I came back and I was like, wow, what was that? Like really just this feeling that I had no idea of what had happened that day. And I feel like the spirit is using everything that you do to bring you deeper into this experience where there is no line between the body being active or not being active. And this morning, like uh, David was even speaking about I don't remember exactly, but something about what I shared yesterday that I really don't want to be famous. And, uh, <laughs> and he was saying something about, I don't remember, do you remember? I know that we talked about that and I say, yeah, it's true in my heart and still the body will go wherever it's called to go. So if the body is called to travel and if I'm called to travel and to keep giving gathering and talks, that's what's going to happen. I have no resistance to it but i just don't feel i have any drown to make something of it it's just that the form is used to to bring about the words of the spirit and to keep demonstrating this experience and share the message that it's not only possible but it is inevitable and and that we if we truly want that that's the experience that we're going to have so I feel that for me that is the answer, is not resisting the activity and not trying to push the stillness either. So it's just really about following the guidance of the spirit in each and every moment and trusting it. Trusting that by setting the goal out front as having a, only one purpose which is awakening, then everything that is coming your way is going to be used for that and then being mindful, like really feeling in your heart again, no compromise feeling in your heart, am I really called to go and see my mother today? Am I really called to take care of those people, to do that thing? And to be very honest and take a, an honest look to that, at that. And why am I doing it? Am I doing it to get something in return? Am I doing it because I think I have to, or that's what a responsible daughter would do? And to really just being very, yeah, very honest and and know that if you have a deeper purpose, keeping doing those things out of guilt is not going to give you anything that you truly want. And um, yeah, and I think it is important to to come to that. It's such an openness too, because some of the deepest experiences that Armel's had recently have been just being in front of a of a of a keyboard, and then having this heavenly music just come out almost like a memory from back when she was five years old 
and then something got interrupted there and now it's coming again. And so that was part of, we were very playfully saying, was saying to Craig, you know, like it could be like, in, like Yanni, you know, live at the Acropolis, you know, it's Armel. And then I, 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 she has a Facebook name, Armel is. And so I said, and then a few years later, live at the Acropolis, it's is. <laughs> and then a few more years go by, and then the second letter drops off. <laughs> live at the Acropolis, it's I, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because as she goes along, there's a sense of no Armel, and you know, everything just gets more and more abstract, away from, from anything of the linear timeline, and just into pure beingness, just being the one, like in the Matrix, you are the one, and, and just letting it flow, so it could involve words, it could involve piano music, it's fun to just know that you'll follow your heart and, and you don't have to have an image, like she was saying before, that you're trying to become something or be like somebody else. Just let the Spirit source you and give you it in the moment. It's beautiful. We've got time for, it looks like, one more question. Okay. okay so if I can just add on and have a, more of a, another question. Uh, Okay, so the, I had gotten so busy that, you know, I wasn't meditating and doing my morning practice with the Course and all of that so much, or it was infrequent or sporadic or whatever. Whereas, you know, years ago I was very disciplined with yogic teachings and doing my meditation every day. It was a whole, whole other thing, and then feeling guilty if I didn't do it. So I've learned to not do that trip up here. So what's happened the last couple of weeks is when I, I did my practice and then my day went really like you're talking about, I was more like in that flow and feeling the guidance and just doing what needed to be done and no guilt or anything and just like, wow. And I look back on the day and go, wow, that, wow, that went really well today. Oh, I, I meditated and I connected with spirit this morning before I began. Um, can you talk a little bit about discipline in your own spiritual practice or not, because some days I get up and I just start going and I didn't sit down and pray and meditate that day. And, um, and then, you know, it's easier to get kind of caught up in all the stuff when you don't take that time. Yeah, the, the thing that is coming to my mind is actually the schedule that we put in place at, uh, at in our, the schedule a new schedule that we started with in our communities all around the world and the schedule came to me as a way as a way to give a structure really to everyone to to rest to allow the mind to rest and so it started at seven o'clock in the mo in the morning by an hour prayer and there's been a lot of stuff coming up with it and a lot of resistances and just really a lot of uh, believing I know what's best for me or thinking it should be different or how can we focus so much on time when we are talking about what's timeless but as, as long as the mind believe in all those things the spirit again will use them to undo them and so discipline is part of what the schedule is about but truly if you see that is as an invitation to rest because really putting your whole day in the spirit's hand <laughs> at the very beginning when you wake up is what it is, is that the whole day you can allow yourself to stop thinking. You don't have to think about anything because everything that you need to do will be given you. And again, it comes back to what? To trust. Trust is the first uh, what do you call that? Characteristic. characteristic of the teacher of God. And it is the most important when you go along this path, to really trust everything that is coming your way and trust the Spirit in such a deep way that you know you can let go of thinking about the future, planning the future, trying to organize the future, and to just be in the moment. And your whole day will come very smooth just by your willingness to stay in the moment. And which is truly being in, in perfect and constant communication with the Spirit. And 
as long as you don't have an idea or a thought about time and that you just allow the flow to be given you, then that's how it will be. And that is the discipline. The discipline for me is to really allow the structure that is given you to just take you wherever you need to go and not thinking that, oh yeah, but I need to do that, I need to do that, I need to do that and that. But just give, give your plan your plan over to spirit and say, okay, what do you want me to do? This is all that I have in mind. What am I to do today? And that will be the discipline to stick with that. And even sometimes it's even someone will come to me and will want to talk and I'm like, no, nope, not now. Because that's not part of the plan and, and I just need to follow whatever's given and whatever I feel drawn to in the moment and to really allow that to guide me, allow the spirit to guide me. And it's not always to necessarily be available for everyone who comes my way, but to truly just trust that the Spirit is with everyone, and I, nobody needs me, ever. Everybody has the Spirit inside of them, and they can tune into, into the Spirit, and I prefer really teaching that to everyone, and extending that, that you have the truth inside of you, and you can, you can also tune into that power by your own self, really, just really tune into that. Pray first, and then whenever I'm available, I'll be happy to join with you. But truly, there is a flow, and the constancy of the state of mind depends on you wanting to give over yourself fully to this flow. So discipline, every pathway, every spiritual pathway has a component of discipline. And um, with A Course of Miracles, you could say, it really comes out in the workbook. Uh, the workbook is given as a path of mind training and disciplining the mind. So just like meditation, like Kriya Yoga, whatever, you, transcendental meditation, these are methods. That, that method requires, it just basically has two guidelines. You know, don't do more than one lesson a day, and as best you can, try not to make exceptions to the daily lesson. But you can do the lesson in a wide variety of circumstances. Helping your mom out, you know, when, with her tenants, or whatever the form seems to be, the Course is giving you a mind training discipline, and it doesn't take even that much time to do the lessons. So it's not time consuming either. Um, but it, it does have great benefits when you're able to follow the practice periods and, and not make exceptions to the lesson as you go through the day. You know, I am sustained by the love of God, lesson 50, and then you, you have a tenant of your mother's who doesn't want to leave uh, the building, you know, and then you have to come back to the lesson of the day to solve the issue. And that's a, a mental discipline. It's not necessarily rituals, in terms of form, like a lot of religions and spiritualities have, but there definitely is that uh, mental discipline. And as uh, Armel was saying, for those that come to our community, many of them have been with the Course some, for some time, for quite a few years, and they're still looking for going deeper, deepening their discipline, and uh, then it's just a trust that this is given by the Spirit as a way to to rest, so that's the example of that. Yeah, and the, the word commitment also comes to my mind. I feel the Spirit give us mission or assignments to help us really learning of tr what true commitment is about because the ego is really scared of commitment. And, um, and I feel like for me, what's been given me a the beginning was a marriage, so that is a commitment in form, but the purpose of the marriage was for the spirit, was to undo the ego. And so I feel like the spirit will give us a mission like that, and so it's just about really praying and asking, like your, your practice with yoga, for example, there was a commitment that was given you to learn about what is focus, what is commitment, because accepting the atonement is total commitment. And then the, the mind that believes itself separate doesn't know anything about commitment. It's wandering all the time. It's going to speak about one thing and then going to speak about another and then forget the road and then going right and then going left and then totally forget where it is. And because it's, it's used to wander all the time. And so it's about really constantly coming back to the present moment, coming back to focus. 
and everything that we do in the community, every project that we do, is used for that, to learn to focus on the spirit, to learn to focus on the present moment, and seeing all the mind wandering, seeing wherever the mind wants to take you in every moment, you're just painting and everything is okay, and then suddenly you have the thought, oh, I'm so fed up of painting, why am I still painting? It's like 10 days that I'm painting every day, this is so painful, then you go on, like for sure the experience can only be painful when you have those thoughts and so the practice is come back to just painting and be in the flow of the spirit and and by this focus the only thing that is there is love in your heart truly and I've been practicing that with cleaning the peace house at the very beginning when I was there I would have all those attack thought in my mind and I would like why am I the one to clean the peace house I didn't come here to clean like and having all this pride and it would be an awful experience and then I would join with my friends and I would just share all my feeling, all my belief about what it means for me to clean a house and I didn't come for that and I would just really go into that and look deeply and then I would go and clean the peace house and I would just be in such a bliss and so much love pouring through. I was like, oh my God, the next one would just sit on this toilet bowl. Oh my God, they would feel all the love. They would just be in the love by sitting here. Or I would do the shower and I would like, oh my God, this is such an amazing experience. And the only, the only thing that I would be extending was love. And I would just imagine the next person who would just open the door of this house would only feel this love everywhere because that was the only thing that was in my mind and in my heart. And that's the experience we want to have. And so it's really seeing that it's coming from inside again. And that's the commitment, the commitment to love, the commitment to spirit, and using everything in order to change our mind. And seeing that when we have attack thought, we experience something else but love. And when we, we truly focus on the spirit, love is the only experience we have. So really seeing it, it's all coming from inward. That's time. <laughs> I, no, I just wanted to share a little bit of my experience in preparing for your visit. And it was quite a bit what Armel was just saying, that I, I had some resistance. And <laughs> Lynn's laughing because she, she helped me move through it, or she just was present with me. That um, it felt like a solo venture. And, and there was some angst about that. That, that one of my lessons is really learning how to effectively ask for support and assistance. And so at, at a certain point, you know, there, there, were, there was communications with Carrie and then with Sundari, and so there was this sort of circle of communication and bits and pieces were coming through. And sometimes they shifted and sometimes, you know, they would move back and forth and, and it was a great, um, practice of just going with it and and it was beautiful and then there was this ah, you know this ah, moment when oh feeding them ah, I can't do it. and then this huge huge wave of resistance of I can't do this but I can't do this because of this 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 and this and and then the just breathing through it and giving it a little bit of time and the shift of oh what was that? You know, and, and, and then the allowing it and, and then just the movement of, of watching my week unfold and going to um, Smart and Final and picking out food and loving you all and, and just picking out this food that would nurture you while you were here. So it shifted from this <sighs> to this ah, oh, you know, like the sitting on the toilet. So it was, a, it was a lot like that. Yeah. And, and, and Lynn had an experience through some of those phases. So thank you. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you, Louise. Thank you for sharing that. So.